Good evening. I hope you had a good day today. I want to talk to you about the one mind test. And so what do you mean by that, Dr. Murphy? You know, every encounter offers us, you know, the opportunity that we can be either one with the body or we can be, you know, in fellowship and care about one another through the eyes of Christ. But this gives us the opportunity to be who we really want to be or that we should be in the eyes of God. You know, it's an exciting thing to know that no one has the power to take charge of our mind but the Lord, even our actions in any circumstance. And many of us, far way too long, gave our power willingly to others. We just turn our power over, our mind, our thoughts over to others, and we wonder why we feel this disconnection, this disunity, because first it begins with us for this one mind. You know, it may have seemed easier than standing up for ourselves, so we just did it. You know, we just let it go. We just say, oh, and then they wound up twisting our minds or encouraging us to feel less empowered than, you know, divinely empowered in who we are and or what we're doing. You know, over the years, I've seen so many people who have been challenged by others or felt intimidated by others because they didn't feel like they lived up to their expectations. Or maybe it just was an habitual thing that you found yourself doing. Or perhaps maybe you were just depressed and you just folded it and, you know, say, I'm not going to do anything. Just let them do whatever just so they can get away from me. But for sure, you need to know this one thing. We simply didn't know how good empowerment would be or feel. Or we would have even been more assertive long ago. But we decided that we're not going to say anything because I don't want them to think that I'm all that in a bag of chips. So we just shut it down. But each day, as you begin to think about these acronyms that I'm going to be sharing with you in a few minutes, each day, if you would process this one mind acronym that I'm about to give you, it'll give you a little bit more inviting to be empowering for yourself when you realize that the opportunities that are present for yourself are there. They're there for God to push you and thrust you into keeping your mind in a one state, which means I'm one with Christ. And then now you're in this, what I call, dancing lessons of being in one, being in unity, that God is offering us this opportunity to be in him. And so you need to realize this is so key to what he shares with us about our mindset and our heart as it relates to being one with the body as we are in Christ. You know, Romans chapter 15 says, and we'll start at verse 1, he says, When then that are strong out to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Verse 2, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to what? Edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that are reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation and me, comfort, grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. That what? Ye may with one mind, there it is, and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, Receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now, I want you to get your pen and paper. And after you get these acronyms of one mind, I want you to think about this before you go night night. At the end of the day, I want you to think about what has happened. And then I want you to make a tally about how you did with your self-empowerment, with your one mind in, the, you know, in Christ. And treating your brethren as you would want them to treat you. And so I want you to think about that before you go to sleep tonight. And tally of all the ways you felt like maybe you got depressed or maybe you got too weak. You know, to try to stand up and be empowered to let them know you know who you are and you know where you're going. And sometimes, some things you got to cut off so that God can grow, send growth. But you allow yourself to get depressed and, you know, rejected by these who do not qualify to even be in the midst. And so let's look at the first one is the O. You're going to focus only on that. That means that one thing. 
Don't do this million of thoughts around, around, around. It's going to make you depressed. But you only want to focus on one thing. You want to think about if you're depressed, you want to focus on that. If you feel like you're feeling rejected, you want to focus on, focus on that. But focus on the emotion itself. Not everything that's around it. Because then you're going to start feeling rejected and worse. But just focus and meditate on that, what it made you feel, that one thing. And then the second thing you want to do is you want to consider the now. You consider the now. How are you experiencing this emotion in this moment? Not how you felt yesterday and the day before, but just right now. Okay? And then the next thing you want to do in this uh, one word is focus on the environment. That's the E. Is anything having outside of you that is prompting this emotion in this moment? Think about that. What's happening in your environment? Are you responding to memories, wants, past events? If so, refocus to the moment. What is happening in this, what, immediate second, both inside and outside of you? That means around you and inside of you. And then the I. This means you want to increase your senses. You want to experience your immediate senses in the now. What are you touching, tasting, seeing, hearing? Are you replaying what you saw and heard from the past? Are you really in the moment? That means are you still meditating on what they said, what they did, how they talked to you, how they treated you? You need to think about that. You want to increase your senses. And then number five. You want to take a non-judgmental stance. That's in the what? Now. And I want you to think about the non-judgmental stance toward what you're being mindful of. Describe your emotion to yourself without all the imperatives, you know, all the urges. You don't want to go there. Watch the emotions without dread or threat. You need to look at them and don't just start judging. I should have done that. I, I should have did this better or this or that. Just for this moment. Feel it up close and don't try to change it one iota. You need to feel that thing. You want to pour it in to your emotions so you can really, really understand what's happening. You're being mindful. You're thinking about this emotional pain. It's helping you to recover. And you got to know that if you take those acronyms I just gave you, O-N-E, one, just one. That will help you to understand that anyone that's been teasing you, anyone that's been rejecting you, anyone that's giving you a hard time, or those things that seem too hard that you can't seem to break free from, that it seems that like everybody is getting along fine except you, it seems like everybody is seeming to grow spiritually or financially and not you, and their marriages seem happy and their children seems so great and good and you're still having trouble with yours, you got to know that this is God. He's showing you that he wants you to be in the now so that everything that you pray for, all the desires of your heart, you just saw me read, just heard me read the scripture. If we do these things, the Bible tells us that ye may, what, with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can rest assured that you will receive those things that means most to you or that you have need of. Now, again, you got to remember, it's a good thing to be habitual in your self-empowerment. It's going to make you better. It's going to make you grow. It's going to make you pull out the things and reject some things. It's going to make you move around some people who are giving you a hard time or, or leeching off you. It's what I call uh, sap suckers. But give yourself an opportunity to be empowered. God wants you to know that he is here for you and everything that he has promised you concerning your children, your ministry, or your family, or your marriage is going to be all right. Amen? So remember, it's going to be up to you. God bless you.